Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we did a lot of business that had been building up in the Reach, and then for the first time came to the Blue Kingdom. So at the end of the last episode, we just got to Sky Barnet, which seems to be the hub area for the Blue Kingdom, and didn't do anything here, so there's a lot to do here. <laughs> Quests and general exploration and checking out what equipment they have for sale. Let's start. Hmm. Let's start with taking on crew. A handful of London engine crew linger at the makeshift station. Escapees from vessels crashed or stranded in the Blue Kingdom. More numerous are the masked, silent shades of the dead. They gather around your locomotive. They want work. Oh. Silent Shades of the Dead. How would it be to have them on board? I remember there's been a couple uh, events that have happened where it says like you have to be crewed by mainly the living to be able to do them. I'm guessing this is how you'd be crewed by not the living. There's a chance... Uh, recruit two or three crew. There's a chance some of them will be Shades of the Dead. Three to five, some of them will be Shades of the Dead. What do I not have? Oh, the 15 days between hiring crew is a universal time limit, not just per station. Because I just got crew from New Winchester. Okay. I'm going to repair my locomotive just to look at the description. I'm not actually hurt. There are few mechanics in the Blue Kingdom. If you want to repair your locomotive, you'll need to be in good enough favor to requisition one of the embassy's hard-worked engineers. Ah, yeah. The Gratitude of the Embassy of Albion. Let's go to the grand entrance. The entry hall runs through the toll tower, through gates that are never closed. The hall is full of passing spirits, a few of them human, or rather, few of them human. A masked warhorse, a masked dolphin, swimming easily in the ghost of an ocean. A creature with ten-foot wings, which would certainly be more frightening if it showed its true face. That's probably a, a curator. No one speaks, and there are no footfalls, only a faint cerceration like the drift of leaves. Oh, that's not cerceration, that's susceration. The masked dolphin swimming easily in the ghost of an ocean. Sounds really cool. Get your bearings. There are stairs up and down, and less ordinary means of entry. A masked orangutan just descended a pole to the floor below. Alongside the grand entrance is the marketplace of litigators for all who need companionship and guidance in their encounter with the Blue Kingdom. Well, that would be me. Downstairs, prominent devils live, and in the upper floors of the toll tower is the Embassy of Albion. A constant stream of dead spirits enters the Blue Kingdom through the base of the tower. Once there was a manned toll gate, but the fees had become more complicated, and the toll window is closed now. So that just like unlocked all the, the different things now that we've gotten our bearings. The Marketplace of Litigators? What's with the name? Marketplace of Litigators? I mean, those are people... Lit litigators are people who legislate, or uh, is that just lawyers? I'm not quite sure, but it's something like that but to describe them as basically guides to the Blue Kingdom. Let's go to the Embassy of Albion, something about as familiar as I think we can get here. The top three floors of the tower belong to the Embassy of Albion. The visitor climbs ten flights of amber stairs guarded by spirits and devils, and arrives in a modest-sized parlor decorated with a pink floral carpet and a painting of the Empress. The secretary of the embassy works in the neat half of the office. The disordered half is the domain of the cultural attaché. Hmm. Seek an appointment with the ambassador. 100% chance of success. 
You'll have to convince the secretary that you have an appointment already. Question a litigator about the Blue Kingdom. I should probably do that. Request the embassy's assistance with a local bureaucracy. Deliver port reports of the Blue Kingdom. Need to have port reports first. Fair. Invest in copies of the cultural attaché's work. There are 19 <laughs> volumes published. He's working on the 20th now. This exchanges gratitude for a volume of notes on the Blue Kingdom, which can be used to hire certain assistants. Let's question a litigator about the Blue Kingdom. In matters of local protocol, they know all there is to know. It's very simple. The Blue Kingdom is open to different spirits depending on the status they hold. Newcomers are invisible, and they can go almost nowhere, not even to the House of Days, says the secretary. Those who have not yet died must go to the stone-faced court to be acknowledged as anti-deceased. <laughs> if you were dead, you'd be given the status of ephemera. The ephemera prepare to pass through into the heart of the Blue Kingdom. Is that all? It is not. The yoked are servants in the Blue Kingdom and dead as well. You won't want that status. But, she adds, if you really want all the details on this matter, you should go to the marketplace of litigators and be properly instructed. There are experts there who can explain for hours. So, it sounds like I need to go to the Stoneface Court to be acknowledged as anti-deceased. Request the embassy's assistance with the local bureaucracy. Perhaps they offer some services to Londoners. I fear you'll have to hire your own litigator from the marketplace of litigators if you want representation, says the secretary. Regrettably, the embassy of Albion cannot intervene in local matters. From her tone, it's clear that while someone might regret this circumstance, she personally does not. Seek an appointment with the ambassador. When you arrive, the ambassador is dressing a wound on her arm. My predecessor was afraid to leave the toll tower. She remarks as you come in. You hardly saw any of the Blue Kingdom. I'm determined not to duplicate his errors. But as you see, there are some costs to be uh, to the more assertive approach. The cuts on her arm are clean and shallow. They look like characters in an unfamiliar alphabet. An encounter with the Logoi, she says. And no, I don't know what it's supposed to mean. Sit. What do you want from me? You may return to visit the ambassador when you have news. The ambassador is a tall, silver-haired woman. She's draped in medals and commendations, but none of these are recent. Piled in front of the ambassador is a stack of demands, all marked urgent, pertaining to payments due soon, past due, and in their final notice period. Offer to help with her financial concerns. Sure. There might be value in putting the ambassador in your debt. There is, the ambassador admits, a small matter. The embassy's place in the toll tower is leased by permission of the Blue Kingdom. Observe the lease, she says, pushing a document across the table towards you. It says that we are entitled to remain here for three viewings of the sun. The devils take this to refer to days by the calendar, and they are having fees levied against us. But I argue that I haven't seen the judgment of the Blue Kingdom even once. So the lease is nowhere near complete. She watches expectantly to see whether you still want to be involved. <laughs> involved in a rental dispute, <laughs> yay. Three viewings of the sun. Haven't seen the judgment of the Blue Kingdom, meaning they haven't seen the sun even once? I hope I get to meet a sun. I know we're going to go into a sun, well, a dead sun, at the Old Tom's Well, using the bathysphere. But I want to meet a living sun. And be like, hey, what's up? And then they'll be like, hey, not much. And then they burn my entire body with sigils and I just vaporize. It'll be nice. There's this faint ding in the back of the soundtrack that keeps just recurring. 
every, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 seconds. And it's driving me up the wall a little bit because I'm waiting for a package to be delivered and I keep, I keep thinking, is that the doorbell? Like the actual doorbell, well, I would hear the buzzer before the doorbell and the actual doorbell itself and buzzer would both be way, way, way louder than that little ding. But still, ding, ding. Ask where one might begin renegotiating the embassy's lease. She hasn't done it herself, but perhaps she knows where to start. The House of Days will have to give a ruling, the ambassador says. They do intake for humans at the Court of Apes. <laughs> They've never allowed me further than that, but perhaps you'll be more fortunate. The Court of Apes. It's at the House of Days. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The Court of Apes. I wonder how many different courts they have. I mean, we heard about uh, like an armored warhorse or something walking around. A dolphin. Ghosts, basically. The, the undead. Humans. I wonder if they have different courts for every group. Alright, let's visit the marketplace of litigators. Litigators and resident devils have set up their stalls among the crowd heading into the Blue Kingdom. Don't go alone. Hire a psychopomp. <laughs> psychopomp? Advises a banner in indigo lettering. A masked woman is negotiating at the first booth, offering two silver coins and a lock of hair. Hire a cowled loquacitor in exchange for ministry approved literature. I'm glad I brought some. Although, I mean, my. I could just access the bank here, so it doesn't actually matter that I have it on board. The cowled, cowled loquacitor can assist with challenges of hearts and veils. They can assist me in challenges? Hire a nameless spirit with a vision of the heavens can assist with challenges of mirrors and hearts. Huh. It carries a jar containing its voice, it wears a mask, and yet it seems familiar. It speaks through the jar that has its voice. That's really cool. Embittered devil. Can okay, assist with iron and mirrors. He has the face of an arsonist and the breath of a blast furnace. Question a litigator about the Blue Kingdom. Let's do that. They offer preliminary consultation, free of charge. You ought to be marked anti-deceased, anti explains a litigator bluntly. You know what that means, of course. Have a seat. The consultation is free of charge for the first 12 hours. Go to the White Well north, northwest of Sky Barnet to pursue anti-deceased status. North, northwest. Okay, so like here... A litigator's assistant has offered you a pillow on the stone floor and prepared you a cup of heated ox blood. Gross. In front of you is a wax tablet, which offers a menu of suitable questions and which is entitled Liturgy of Consultation, Lesser Rite. You know, I wasn't expecting the Blue Kingdom to be a place just... almost like more obsessed with bureaucracy than the Parliament. It's absurd. Uh. Oh, I can get a port report. May I take some notes? This consultation provides ample matter for a port report. But the liturgy is repetitious, and you are soon embellishing it with stories of invented shades and ruined monuments to past empires. Oh, still got a port report, though. Hand your port reports into the toll tower. Oh, I can turn it in right here. What is anti-deceased status? The anti-deceased are those who, uh, and here the assistant coughs significantly, come to the Blue Kingdom ahead of their time. 
when they have not yet passed away. The kingdom does permit to the antideceased a certain limited access to its functions, but one will always be something of a curiosity. The antideceased in the Blue Kingdom must watch out for the perfection, the Blue Lagoy who punish apparitions and violations of the normal order. Whoa. Right, that one person was cut by a Lagoy. What are the Lagoy? And how do they punish those of unsuitable status? The Lagoy are words spoken by the Sapphire King. They are decrees. They are statements about how the world should be. They are giant wheels of spinning fire. Oh. So their decrees made manifest as physical things? The Sapphire King... Just assuming that's the sun here. What is ephemera status and why are the ephemera so many? Those who have come to the Blue Kingdom in the proper way. The ephemera are the many, many dead who have come to the Blue Kingdom to enter by death's door. They are ephemera only until they pass through and then... But it is forbidden to speak of that higher mystery. The assistant interrupts the liturgical explanation in order to ring a bell three times and to kiss a branch of antlers wreathed in honeysuckle. Huh. Traditions. The ephemera are not entirely free of troubles, however. It may take time to proceed through death's door, and while they remain outside, they're harried by the gold lagoy in order to inspire them to better and wiser behavior. So there's many different colors of lagoy. Gold, and I think we just heard of blue a minute ago. What is yoked status, and why might one dread it? Yoked spirits are those bound to the service of the Blue Kingdom. They serve its Lagoy and its courts, carry objects, and convey souls. Those who are yoked must guard against the Red Lagoy, the Propriety, who protect the kingdom from its own servants and make sure that no one is overly seen or excessively heard. This place is extra weird. <laughs> and I'm saying that having been to The Reach and Albion and Eleutheria. What is invisible status? And why is it the worst status of all? To be invisible is to have no status. Those who are invisible have not yet been processed by the Blue Kingdom. This is the worst of outcomes. Every one of the Lagoy is an enemy to the invisibles. Thank you for the 12 hour consultation. So I think that's all to do right here. Well. What if I hire one of these people? I mean, I don't have any challenges to overcome right now, but I want to see what happens. Uh, yeah, I'll go with the first one. Cowled Laquasiter. It offers you its assistance with notarizical concerns. It leaps through the book, especially the index where the words are most dense and the type smallest. Then it folds the volume away into a pocket of its surprisingly capacious robe and invites you to lead the way. The cowled loquacitor will assist you for a month before further payment is required. Okay, so they just kind of come with me for a while? Because, yeah, I don't think there's anything they can do right here. Not yet, anyway. Let's do the quest. The Attaché's Search for the Lost Love. The supercilious Attaché is a very busy man, apparently. But when you mention the bleak industrialist's name, his secretary suddenly waves you through. Remember, that's the quest from uh, Port Prosper. The bleak industrialist wanted to speak with me. And I think it was their, their lover that they wanted me to bring back from the dead, basically. And this is their agent or something that they have working here. Their person on the inside. You find the attaché hunched at his desk, halfway through a mackerel sandwich. The bureaucracy here is utterly intractable, he moans. 
I tried all the official channels. Honestly, I filled forms until my hands bled. But they won't even tell me where she is. It's no use anyway. The dead can't go back. <laughs> you sure about that? Because I think we smuggled one of the dead in to the Reach at the very beginning of the game. Ask Reach to start looking. You'll have to track her down the old-fashioned way. A spirit is sent first to the White Well for judgment at the Stone-Faced Court, explains the attaché. If they are officially declared dead, they move on to Death's Door. From there, well, nobody knows. I have something that may help your search, if you insist on persisting. He retrieves a wax tablet from his drawer and pushes it across the desk. It declares the bearer is officially dead. Everything here runs on spit and paperwork, you see. I went to a lot of trouble to get hold of this, so tell the industrialist that my debt is paid. I now have a testament of salt. Oh, so I can pass as officially dead. Well, that's important. Can I use that, like, right here for anything? Any new options? Looks like I can dismiss my current assistant, get someone else if I need him. Oh yeah, let's deliver the port report to the Blue Kingdom. Even though we just got it from here. The secretary has an intricate filing system. Ah, it gave me gratitude of the Embassy of Albion. For each report, the secretary completes an intake form noting the subject of the report and a quality metric based on a number of objective details included. Maps and sketches add to the quality metric. Adverbs incur a penalty. Afterwards, she places each report in a labeled drawer and passes your receipt and a sack of sovereigns. Two minutes later, the cultural attaché is kneeling beside the drawer, scattering sheets on the floor around him. Oh, that's a fine detail. What rot? That will need a great deal more color. The secretary does not have sufficient status to complain, so she does not. Yeah, quest-wise, I think we're done here for now. Let's check out the shop. Well, actually, let's check out the bazaar first. Um, yeah, the description isn't any different. They do have prospects here. I was wondering if they would. It almost seems kind of too easy to have prospects here because it's such a small place. But, I mean, maybe I'm just going to be harried by Lagoy the whole way, so it's going to be super hard to get anywhere. I don't know. Hours to the White Well. Caged catches for the Forge of Souls. I mean, I guess I'll just take them all. Yeah. Might as well get rid of this. What is... What is this for? The circus? I want to get rid of it because I'm like, there's no way I'm going to do that, but... There's no reason to get rid of it. I've got the space to keep it. Let's see what they have here. The turret. A desperate attempt by London's embassy to supplement funds. The ambassador's smile is manic as he invites visiting captains to peruse the embassy's wares. Hmm. I think it was in one of the updates, maybe the newest one. The Wayfarer update that changed supplies in the Blue Kingdom into Petrichor. Looks like they're more expensive than normal supplies. The food of the dead, it is pale as the ghost of a moon, sweeter than spun sugar, and crumbles in your mouth like plaster of Paris. I wonder if it does anything special. How weird. Yeah, these are the ships. But, nothing new. Okay, let's check out equipment at the last autumnal slope. The ambassador's sister is entrusted with the provisioning of armaments and equipment to visiting captains. There was apparently no one better suited to the task. Let's start from the highest tier down. What can I use? I can use this. Gates of Ivory. Holy shit, that's better than the ratty baggage handlers. Instead of 11 hold, it's 15. These heavy doors of carved carmine bone distort distances in the place behind them. The accompanying handwritten note specifies you should only use them for storing cargo and not, under any circumstances, crew. 
Okay. <laughs> 3,000. Pretty expensive, but I mean, I got 10,000 coin, plus I have a lot of things I could sell. Um, but let me take a look at everything before I buy something, just in case it becomes irrelevant. Because I'm going to get something else in its place or something like that. Man, there's a lot of things that require iron at 75. I bet those would be real good, but I... I'm never going to have an iron that high, am I? <laughs> no way. Hearts? Nope. Ah, another Veils thing. The Saint Fire. Caminus Yard's Saint Fire. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap? Do they just rhyme reap with reap? The bright star in the Caminus Yard's firmament, the Saint Fire, is a gatling gun of unparalleled ferocity. Not advisable if you want to take prisoners. This must be mounted in a large weapon slot. Ooh. Oh, that's a... Mm, that's a hard ask. It would have to replace this. And this is real good. Okay, how's it looking? Damage, heat, range is 650. That's a bit less than the Vala, which is already feels a bit short compared to this, which has a range of a thousand. Hmm. I don't think I want this. I think I would want this if I had two large weapon slots. So I could use it to replace the Vala. But without that, I don't think so. I think there is some sort of a ship that has two large weapon slots. Let's see. One, zero, zero, one. Okay, none of these. <laughs> there must be one, right? If it's not any of these, which what would it have to be? I guess it would have to be the one at Empyrean, the Empyrean Palace place. Empyrean Eagle. Maybe that one had two? Or maybe none have to. Hearts. Hmm, mirrors. 50, I can do this. Aesthetically calibrated, structural support where the modern locomotive needs it most. Why should armor only be on the outside? That's an auxiliary slot. I don't think I'd want to put armor in the auxiliary slots. They're too important. Yeah, no thanks. Iron 50 plus. Uh, seven hold on the bridge. What I have right now gives me four hold plus four quarters. Eh, I don't think there's any reason for that. There's the Vala, which I already have. Black Jape, I think, was something I could have already gotten. I think. An automatic shotgun. Very, very short range. 400. Hmm got a 2 to 3 damage to heat ratio. Pretty sure this is better. 18 to 25. Gleaming Galley. Ah, it requires 50 hearts. Wow, so there's really not much, if anything, I want here, actually. Gates of Ivory. Definitely. Let's get that right now. And then, like, I don't know. I want to try the Saint's Fire. But it takes a big weapon slot. I'm going to buy it. Let's grab it and let's put all this stuff on. This is going to be a bit more hold. 38. That is a ridiculous amount of hold space. Wow. Then let's try replacing my amazing rocket. Holy shit, that shoots fast. And the shots move fast, too. God, that looks really satisfying, but it's still just way less safe of a gun than this rocket launcher, because this allows me to get extreme range and makes it easy to hit things or at least do some damage to them, because I can choose when to explode it and it has, you know, a, a blast radius. 
this needs direct hits, but I want to try it. Okay, I was thinking of ending the episode, but I want to find something else. I want to explore this place a little bit more, so let's just find another station. Let's try to head towards the place where I can get the anti-deceased status. I think that was north-northwest. So there's really no reason for me to have an absolute crap ton of fuel and supplies on here, because I've already got so much of them. So just put one of a bunch of stuff. In case I need it. I hope we encounter some Lagoy. Let's go. Really curious what they look like, how they're going to behave, how hard they're going to be. Are they all burning wheels of fire like that one person said? Where they were answered. Nice name. Hmm. It's a port over there. Platform. Yeah. We'll go there later. Yeah, look at how small this place is. I'm almost to the center. Let's go to the center. This place is not what I was expecting. It's more sepulchral. Like, it looks like a big tomb, which I guess is appropriate because this, this is the land of the dead. There's light, but I was expecting like brilliant light and, and like blue skies. It's called the Blue Kingdom after all, but I don't see any blue at all. Could be the station, maybe north northwest. Eh, I don't think that's the station. I'm gonna go to it anyway, though. Maybe it is. Oh, horrors patrol heaven. They seek stray souls. The dashing ram. Force open the doors. Crate of vegetation. Does that mean seeds? Oh, supplies. Cornucopia of vegetables, only recently abandoned. Gargantuan tomatoes. Substantial onions. Obscene parsnips. Soup will be the order of the day for the foreseeable. I'm scared. We're, where are these Lagoy? Oh god, I think I just saw one. Something below me. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a scribe spinster. These guns are pretty fun to use. They're definitely not nearly as safe, but they allow you to put out a lot of damage really quickly. I gotta get used to how fast these projectiles move. I'm overshooting a lot. Nice. 
Yeah, not a safe, but fun to use. I'm going to stick with it for a bit. Ancient knowledge. Two scraps of ancient knowledge. Yeah, there's not, like, this place is so small, so where are the Lagoy? They've described so many different Lagoy with so many different colors, I was expecting them to be all over the place. Disturbance in the night. Oh, this is uh, Langley Hall, right? Yeah. They want to return. Yeah, we will, someday soon. Oh, right, and they make a mistake and hurt the hole a little bit. A silent band of masked spirits wander amidst the columns of this dusty ruin. Spearfers lurk in these passes, hunted by the guardians of the Blue Kingdom. Is this one of those libraries? No, no, that's not. This is a different... An enclave of the dead. These shades, some once human, some not, all masked and quiet, are performing the observances they hope will secure their passage through death's door. They pray around a pattern of stones arrayed in complex circles. Occasionally, one of them stands and moves a stone, provoking a fierce but silent and gesticulary argument. When you approach, they stop. The laws of guest right require that they offer you respite. Hmm. Enjoy their hospitality or depart. Why does this require a crew? Something gonna happen? The crew are weary, or wary rather, but your hosts insistently press bowls of pale food into your hands. Thanks for the petrichor. You tarry a while, waited on by the slow, courteous spirits of the dead. Their food is petrichor, the sweet sponge-sure confectionery eaten in the kingdom. The ruins are still and restful. You doze a while and wake to porcelain masks watching over you. Oh, they seem nice. Tear went down by quite a bit and we have one dining with the dead. Alright, let's head over to this port. What does something ghastly look like in the Blue Kingdom? Let's check it out. Oop, just took some damage. Whoops. Nethermore. I love the names here. Whoa. What is that? Uh -huh. Holy shit. There's a station here. I'm scared to go over that hole. I'm worried it's going to suck me in. Well, Mouth. Okay, well. I guess that explains what it is. Winds claw your engine. The white well is near. The white well. Would that be where one of those well seeds were used? And is there a dead sun at the bottom of that one too? Yeah, I do not want to fly over that. It creeps me out. these new places and this new music. The stone face court? Yep, this is the right place to get the anti-deceased status. And a good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far and when I return, uh, we're going to go to court. <laughs>